Azure Kubernetes service, managed Kubernetes series. But in order to continue this series, we need to understand first what Kubernetes is and then the architecture. And in today's video, we are going to talk about the architecture of Kubernetes. Okay, so we all know it's a system for automating application deployment. Modern applications are dispersed across clouds, virtual machines and servers. Administrating apps manually is no longer a viable option. Kubernetes transforms virtual and physical machines into a unified API surface. A developer can then use the Kubernetes API to deploy, scale, and manage containerized application. So uh, we all know a little bit of the Kubernetes architecture as it has been shown in the previous video. It is more like a master and worker node architecture. Okay, so we'll be continuing from there. All right, so this is our, uh, let's suppose these, this is our master, the big one. And the small ones are our worker nodes and they have a connection, a communication happening. They are connected. Okay, creating a Kubernetes cluster. So this is master. And these are worker nodes. Okay, and there are components involved. It is just it's not like a master. We create a master, you create a worker node, and things are all hunky dory. You get a, there are so many components involved. That's the only reason this Kubernetes is so awesome, and it's a hot topic for today. Super hot topic of today. So these are the components you'll find in each and every worker node. Kubelet, Kube proxy, container runtime. Okay. Kubelet, Kube proxy, container runtime. Don't worry, we'll be talking about these each and every individual uh, components. But for now, just try understand or remember this each and every worker node has these three components in order to have a successful kubernetes cluster running kubelet kube proxy container runtime in our case the container runtime is docker this is our master okay and there are a few components that you find on the master always running these are control manager API server, scheduler, and etc. ETCD, etc. It's a database. And they don't talk, these components don't talk to each other directly. They always go through the API server. Okay? And we, like the administrators, give command to the API servers from outside through a command line or through a GUI, which is called Kubelet. So this is a overview of an architecture from a 10,000 view. You can say that all the components of master you can see control manager, API server, scheduler, etc. Components of worker node, kubelet, kube proxy, and container runtime. See so these seven components are the very uh, are, are the components of the Kubernetes the components okay now let's talk about each and every components why they are here what it does okay then we'll expand the work on order a little bit because we also to talk about pod and container because it is it's kubernetes right so you're gonna have a pod wrapped around the containers all right so Kubernetes uh, master node receives input from CLI, okay, or UI. This cube, cube cuddle, cube CDL is something that your administrator or developer use to give command to the API server. You define pods, replica sets, and services that you want Kubernetes to maintain. 
for example which container image to use which port to expose and how many pod replicas to run okay so api server api server is the front end of the control plane master node this is what we are calling the control plane and the only component in the control plane that we interact with directly that's the api so we can see the arrows it's if if control manager talks to scheduler or at set it won't go directly though these are residing on the same master node and you may have more than one master node for high availability this is just the architecture you may have three or more than three you may have thousands of nodes in the cluster okay it's it's not like one master and three worker you can have a number of master and node okay all right so they don't talk to each other directly they all go through the api server so api server is the front end of the control plane and the only component in the control plane that we interact with directly internal system components as well as external user components all communicate through the same api that's what the api is server for okay now at set i told you this is a database this is a key value store okay and we call it we call it it's at set right also called at set it's a key value store it's a database kubernetes uses to back up all cluster data it stores the entire configuration and state of the cluster okay the master node queries at set to retrieve parameters for the state of the nodes pods and containers even if you do kubectl get nodes or you do kubectl any other command to figure out the configuration to figure out the information that you need it will fetch for you from the at set okay now let's go to controller the role of the controller is to obtain the desired state from api server it checks the current state of the nodes it is tasked to control and determines if there are any differences and resolve them if any okay for example if one of the node goes down and it finds out right it goes to take care of those things now scheduler a scheduler watches for new requests coming from the api server and assign them to the healthy nodes it ranks the quality of the nodes and deploys pods to the best suited node if there are no suitable nodes the pods are put in a pending state until such a node appears okay cool all right so these are the four components and we talked about what they do the control manager i gave the example of node just wanted to elaborate a little bit on that because control manager has a few more controllers not just one node controller replication controller and point controller and service account and token controllers node controller is for what the example i gave for responsible for noticing and responding when nodes goes down replication controller responsible for maintaining the correct number of pods for every replication control object in the system endpoint controller populates the endpoint objects okay that is join services and pods services are required when you want to expose your pod we want to access your application from outside or the communication okay now service account and token controllers create default account and api access tokens for new namespaces so if you go a little deeper you'll find so many things that construct each and every components okay but we are not going so deeper here we're just trying to understand the architecture even this part in aks is not something that we take care of but we are just trying to understand and each and every component in master node runs itself inside the pod okay 
and the beauty of the pod if goes down it will create instantaneously again just like containers okay all right let's talk about the node components kubelet the very first component is kubelet well kubelet is an agent that runs on each node in the cluster you'll find in each node okay it makes sure that containers are running in a pod so if this is a node worker node you would have your container runtime okay so you would have your pod running and inside the pod you would have the containers running one or more than one okay mm. so that's how the architecture is this is your pod okay no this is your pod and these are your containers which are running inside the pod let me write this down here container okay all right now kubelet takes a set of pod specs that are provided through various mechanisms and ensures that the containers described in those pod specs are running and healthy kubelet doesn't manage containers which were not created by kubernetes so you may have container running on these nodes by yourself but kubelet would not touch those containers just an fyi usually we don't do that all right another component is kube proxy well kube proxy is a network proxy that runs on each node in your cluster implementing part of the kubernetes service concept okay kube proxy maintains network rules on nodes so basically this kube proxy is for the networking purpose inside the cluster okay and okay and this kube proxy makes sure that each node gets its IP addresses implements local IP tables and rules to handle routing and traffic load balancing container runtime pulls images from the container image registry could be public could be private depends and starts and stops the containers okay uh, docker is one of the best container runtime that we have rocket is another one in our case we will be talking docker okay these are the seven components of kubernetes four on the master three on the worker node but if we go a little deeper you'll find there are two more components in a uh, worker node that is pod and container okay so a little brief a pod is the smallest element of scheduling in kubernetes okay so kubernetes doesn't create container the smallest unit is pod but there is a container inside the pod so pod is a wrapper around the container you could have one or more than one container inside a pod and all the container inside the pod would have the same IP addresses okay so pod serves as a wrapper for a single container with the application code based on the availability of resources the master schedules the pod on a specific node and coordinates with the container on time to launch the container okay so this is an absolute basic of kubernetes architecture and this question comes most of the time in your interviews the components of the master now you know it's api control manager scheduler etc etc is database scheduler is all 
scheduling that we do on the worker node control manager are four kind they are like four types of control manager that we talked about node controller replication controller endpoints controller and service account and token controllers so logically each controller is a separate process but to reduce complexity they are all combined into a single binary and run a single process control manager okay then we have api server which is the front end for all the communication and we got three main components on the worker node kubelet kube proxy container runtime all right kube proxy is all about network kubelet is an agent and runs on each node make sure that containers are running in a pod container runtime is responsible for the container so well this is all about an overview of the Kubernetes architecture uh, thank you for watching and you have a good day